Dear valued Verizon customer, Verizon has been notified that copyrighted content may have been shared using your internet connection without permission of the copyright owner. I've been receiving emails like this for a little while now, and it came to a head recently with a different kind of copyright alert. Content owners, for example, artists, movie makers, authors, and their representatives routinely monitor peer-to-peer and file share networks to see if their content, like music, movies, and TV shows, is being shared without their permission, without it being paid for. If they notice somebody sharing their content without their permission through a Verizon account, they inform Verizon by sending us a notice along with information about the copyrighted work and the Verizon internet address of the computer sharing the content. As the primary account holder, you are responsible for making sure your account is not used for copyright infringement. Sharing content without the copyright owner's permission is a violation of U.S. copyright laws and our terms of service and acceptable use policy. Now, their concept of uh, their service and acceptable use policy is based on what is legal and what is not. And Verizon is basically the kind of company that is set, w- would say if, if the government made it, you know, I don't know, just for an example, um, legal to kill Jews, something like that. They, they would say that, no, if you if you do and, and, and it was illegal to like speak out against that, they would say, you know what? Well, it's if you if you speak out against, uh, you know, an, a, a wrong law, if you use speech digital communications to protest such a thing and, and that protest is illegal yeah we're just gonna have to say that's against our policy and we're gonna cut off service to you and we're gonna report you to the authorities so what was shared and when file name sons of anarchy yada 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 i first of all this did not happen in my house this did not happen on my internet connection we've asked everybody who could have possibly downloaded such a thing and it didn't happen this is it, it must have been a glitch in the matrix, right? A glitch in the matrix of bullshit known as intellectual property on the internet. But I would never watch a show that doesn't, uh, or pretends to not know the true definition of the word anarchy in the first place. But this is this is a, a really important tripping of the copyright alert system because it's an example, and there are many others now, and this is a relatively new phenomenon. This started uh, February 27th, according to the Verizon policy blog. But they want you to know, did Verizon give the content owners my personal information? No, no, no. We, I mean, we needed your credit card information, and we needed some personal data in order to hook you up with the service, but we don't share it with anybody, <clears throat> unless it's the government. No, we will not share your personal information with the content owner without either your permission or the receipt of a court order or subpoena. So if the government wants it, they can have the information. Then it's then it's okay. If they're pointing guns at us, we'll just go along with whatever they say. Yeah. The way the process works, the content owner provides Verizon with an IP address. We then match the IP address to a Verizon account and contact the owner directly on their behalf without identifying you. So Verizon here is doing the bidding of copyright holders. Because there's more money in serving them and serving government and serving all the beneficiaries of this racket. And and I shouldn't have to explain that the very concept of intellectual property, except as a voluntary metaphor, but as, as a actual use of the term property as an excuse to point government guns at people because you're like you're violating people's property or restricting, you know, if you believe the metaphor to be real and not just a metaphor, well it's i don't i don't even know where to begin with this my my internet was cut off actually it, you know i shouldn't say it was cut off because i was still able i was still able to contact verizon and watch their their wonderful informational video but this this idea of of, of copyright this this idea of intellectual property in the first place it, 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 with any critical examination should be revealed as as just obscene that you are going to use the force of government to stop the free flow of information now this racket created, unfortunately, by the American Constitution, has been so perverted that it has become counterproductive. And, you know, I I shouldn't even, I mean, the the wording of the the part of the Constitution that that empowers Congress to enact laws that allow content creators to enjoy the whatever the hell it is, um, to promote the science and useful arts. It does the exact opposite. Like, everything the government says it's going to do. I mean, we we have the Marketplace Fairness Act. Yeah. 
everybody gets screwed over fairly and the same people that benefit from you getting ripped off benefit so there's no fairness i mean just it's it, the opposite of what they say they're going to be doing so i i went to the i, I did some research i went to the verizon policy blog for February 27, copyright alert system, what users need to know. This is by Tom Daly, vice president and deputy general counsel for Verizon. Yes, they've, they've got lots of fancy titles there. Earlier this week, the Center for Copyright Information, whose members include five internet service providers, Verizon, Cablevision, Comcast, AT&T, and Time Warner Cable, as well as artists and content creators like members of the Recording Industry Association of America and Motion Picture Association of America, announced the launch of the copyright alert system. Now... You want to look at the destructive power of intellectual property as a, as a racket? Look at the music industry. And I've heard people rail about, oh, pop music sucks. Oh, whatever's at the top of the charts, it's all garbage. It's all crap. Look at what's happened to modern music. What do you think you're, you're going to get when you have centralized control and you actually reinforce this idea that people controlling the mechanisms of distribution should be able to control the flow of content? Go back to before you had the technological innovations that really are kind of like like a his, an historical blip. If you if you look at the, the course of human history, the last hundred years, absolutely insignificant. And it's going to be this sort of in-between time. As, as we see, we are coming to the end of the age of intellectual property. It is being not just rendered obsolete, but ir irrelevant with the internet. But there was a time before that when we, we had a, a rich, we, the American people had a rich tradition. People around the world even a rich traditions and in some places where they are free from government intervention still do in, in cultures where music is not defined by this. And I mean, just if Americans weren't so damn myopic, you would see that the RIAA, you know, is not about producing better music. It's about making more money and ripping you off. And the effect is to lower the quality of music that's available. But if you look around the world, you'll see that in places where music is not restrained by this, they still have the tradition that used to be enjoyed in America of, of folk music, of, of music being shared and, and modified and, and developed, and you could write your own lyrics, and you could modify it, and you could share it, and you could publish it, and you could get it out. And there was no government there to say, well, you know, or no Recording Industry Association of America to, tr to try to use the government to control that free flow of ideas that led to such rich, beautiful music being available to everyone easily and, 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 and just... This this was been this has been choked off, and, and I, I mean you could look at the movie industry too, and you had this idea that well you you have this technology, we're gonna record and produce a movie in in one place, and we're gonna distribute it through limited channels, and it goes out to theaters, and therefore if anybody's showing it or using it, we can we can stop it. Well now that we have the technology of the internet and all that's available, th th this idea this this centralized distribution model becomes irrelevant. The rise of Hollywood was only made possible by government creating centralized control over the movie industry and enforcing intellectual property for a, for a group of people that controlled the very specific distribution mechanism. We see it dying now and we see that th this whole uh, you know decline in the quality of movies. I mean, I've been boycotting Hollywood for for a long time. And I highly suggest you too, and we're going to talk about why it's so important and the, the broader implications of this. But look at, just, I mean, you want to complain? You want to, you want to sit, sit at home and bitch about how movies have gotten shitty and then go shell out 15, 20 bucks for another movie ticket? Because you want to say, oh, well, this one's okay. Well, they'll, they'll, they'll keep me coming in for this. Well, there's that one thing. Fuck that. Stay home. Promote independent producers. So anyways. <laughs> There's so many other implications in, in so many other industries for this. I mean, even in software, ironically, an industry that is so directly connected to the internet and is in many ways producing all the mechanisms that is go going to uh, that, are, that are in the process of rendering intellectual property irrelevant. Verizon earlier today posted an announcement on its website giving our FiOS internet and DSL-based high-speed internet service customers information about how our copyright alert program will work. Here are a few important points to note. First and foremost, Verizon is committed to protecting our customers' privacy and we will not be sharing anyone's identity with the content owners as part of our program unless the content owner asks the government and they get a subpoena or a court order. Yeah. Second, Verizon's role in the program is to forward to our customers information gathered by the content owners about possible peer-to-peer -peer copyright infringement taking place on the customer's internet connection so they can take steps to address the possible infringing activity on their account. Finally, the goal of our copyright alert program is to build education and awareness around the important issues of copyright infringement and help our customers find lawful ways to find and enjoy digital content. Now, there's also... Uh, uh, an FAQ 
on the Verizon website that is is very revealing here. But I, I want to before we get into that, I, I just want to point out this 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 um what are they doing? They're they're serving the content owners. They're serving those who would use the force of government, who would point guns at you for sharing their content. Right. When you go and you go to a movie theater and you buy a movie ticket, where does that money go into into the the, the uh, production houses, into the all all the various uh, corporate entities in Hollywood, and they give this money to the MPAA, Movie Production, Move Motion Picture Association of America. Incidentally, headed by former senator douchebag extraordinaire, f- f- lackey of the financial industry, Christopher Dodd. Yeah, they're using him. You remember Dodd Frank? They're using him to lobby government to get benefits for them. And how does the government do anything? By the threat of force. The government, you should understand government in order to understand intellectual property. Government passes laws, but the only way that they're enforced is by the threat of force. Hence, enforced. Government points guns at people to get you to follow what their words on paper are. These people are saying, we are going to make money. We are going to have this intellectual property racket going because we are going to concentrate the mechanism of production, the means of distribution, because we have the ability because of technology, although not so much anymore. We are then going to use the guns of government to control the behavior of others to make them pay for this monopoly that we have. This is quasi-monopoly. Like all the best actors, all the best directors, all the best producers, they come because they have to go into the system in order to get those best resources. The problem is that's changing now and the equation is changing. And we are changing the equation. But there's a way that we can even accelerate this process now and it doesn't mean banging your head against the Verizon wall here. What is the Digital Millennium Copyright Act? The DMCA was passed in 1998 by the U.S. Congress to protect copyrighted works in the digital age while providing important protections for online service providers. This, get this, get this, to ensure the free flow of information. What the hell is this? I mean, you really, do you, do you believe this? Do you believe, the government is going to point guns at people to restrict their ability to share data and they're saying that this is in order to ensure the free flow of information. When the government tells you it's for this, it's usually for the opposite, but at best it's a diversion. Well, okay, at best it's a distraction that is uh, that, that, that has some validity to it, but in this case, it's the opposite that's the reality. Additional information about the DMCA is available at the government website, and they send you to the government website here. What are the legal penalties for violating copyright laws? Now, this is where we get into the uh, where the rubber meets the road, right? Copyright infringement is unlawful and can subject infringers to potential civil and criminal liability. And then they send you to the U.S. Copyright Office's website. What they're saying here, and, and what you should know if you're, if you're paying attention to the news and you've seen some of these cases and you know the, the history with Napster and everything else, which was like the first major nail in the coffin of intellectual property, is that they can ruin your life. They can totally fuck you over. They can charge you, what, thousands and thousands of dollars for individual songs because they're violations of the law and potentially made it impossible for those copyright or intellectual property rights holders. Right. Yeah, it really makes the, the term right irrelevant. To, 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 to make money by using the government to restrict further the free flow of information. Now, this is really interesting. What is the Center for Copyright Information? What is this corporate monstrosity that has risen up in response to the uh, landscape, the, uh, the legal landscape created by government? The CCI is an organization formed by the organizations that represent U.S. content creators, including the major movie studios, record labels, and the independent studios and labels and leading ISPs. So like the big guys, you know, the big players, they're going to keep the little guys out. But they, 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 they have to put this in the independent studios and labels. But not the ones that are smart enough to say, you know what, like, like Adam versus the man, we're going to make everything copy left. We're going to let everything be free to use and copy and reproduce and remix and do whatever you want with. No. The CCI is dedicated to implementing a copyright alert system designed to deter online peer-to-peer copyright infringement through a series of educational messages and alerts. CCI's objective is to educate consumers about the importance of protecting copyrights in the digital environment, the risk of P2P, and file sharing, ways to get content lawfully with the so- while at the same time respecting the legitimate privacy and interests of internet users. Right. Well, if you try to educate consumers about the importance of protecting copyrights in the age of the internet, and there's an alternate 
you know, narrative available through places like Adam vs. The Man, guess what? It's gonna backfire on you, Verizon, because people are gonna share this information, they're gonna realize that copyright is bullshit, and that this is all a racket. Yeah, you're gonna educate consumers. The risks of P2P and file sharing. Yeah, yeah that's, you're gonna stop peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. Whew. The organization excuse me, the organizations which founded the CCI include the MPAA, the RIAA, as well as five major ISPs, AT&T, Cablevision, Comcast, Time Warner Cable, and Verizon. CCI also benefits from the expertise of an advisory board comprised of leading consumer advocates, privacy and online education specialists, and technical experts. No, these are corporate and government lackeys. If you are a leading consumer advocate, well, you might be... A when someone throws this term at you, like... You have to you have to question this and go. What is the, what what why is why does this smell like bullshit? You're oh, what is a leading consumer advocate? Oh, the ones that we picked and attached the label leading to. Yes, no. If you were really advocating for consumers, you'd be advocating for them to be able to actually consume information and exercise the property rights of the computers of the medium that they own that is containing that their brains that have that data in them technical experts. What can you do if you think the alerts you received are invalid? Which, by the way, I know for certain here. Our copyright alert program allows you to seek review by an independent reviewer, the American Arbitration Association. Oh, <laughs> isn't that nice? The, the opportunity to seek review is available once you have received a fifth or sixth copyright alert from us. If you receive a fifth or sixth uh, copyright alert and you believe the alerts were sent to you in error or that your use of the content meets one of the other available reasons for invalidating alerts, you can request that the AAA review your case by filing an appeal, yada, yada. You can file an appeal within 14 days. There's a $35 fee. Isn't that nice? If we false you accuse, falsely accuse you, you can clear your name by just giving us 35 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Yeah. Well, okay. We'll refund it if we're, if we're wrong. If we decide that we're wrong and you're right, we'll give you 35 bucks back. Yeah. What is fair use? Now, this is really important for, uh, for an independent media producer and a news-ish uh, organization like Adam vs. The Man. We do some public commentary. We talk about the mainstream media. We use clips from uh, major media sources every day. Generally, all under valid, absolutely valid fair use. Fair use is a legal doctrine that permits in certain li limited circumstances the use of portions of copyrighted material without acquiring permission. D determining fair use is not an easy concept. And the defense is oftentimes not available. Really, you're too dumb. You need a lawyer. You need to turn to the legal racket in order to, to determine if what you're doing is fair use. Yeah, well, fair use, it's really simple. And it's not that hard to, to determine what you're doing, is if it's fair use or not. Now, if you're the hypothetically remixing something, they would say that's unfair use. I mean, it's, it's bullshit. It's not even worth parsing out because it's their, you know, bullshit legal definition that allows for, for because they can't say, well, if you're, if you're going to pull a clip from something for commentary, that that's that's illegal, but um, they just you know try to make it more difficult. So, I mean, what if I was watching Sons of Anarchy in order to pull out a clip to do a review? Oh, no, yeah, sorry, too bad. Got to pay thirty-five bucks and and spin the dice or spin the wheel and, and hope it works out for me. Roll the dice. Can't comment. You know, this is the thing. Like, so if if I can't comment on uh, on mainstream media stuff if i end up getting pinged for stuff like this great you know and, and and it really doesn't matter to me but for all the people out there that would be doing reviews all the small independent youtubers who are you know doing movie reviews who are doing movie remixes who who are doing uh re music reviews who are trying to offer commentary you know they, they can't make any money doing this now this is really interesting this this racket of the riaa is such that if you use music in a YouTube video that's not authorized, and you're trying to do a, a review of that song, either you can't make money on it, or your video just gets completely pulled for a copyright viol violation from YouTube. YouTube's the same way. You know, I'm, I'm a part of the Google machine. I know, yeah, we make money from YouTube. But they're just another one of these corporate lackeys that have been, you know, created by government uh, laws that, that, that would end up rather serving government than, than you, the customer. So what happens? If you if you can't comment on this and if and, and already this is this is an already an existing feature that is killing the music industry. I shouldn't say killing the music industry. It is opening up the music industry. It is revitalizing the music industry. If you see the music industry as just the RIAA, yeah, it's killing it. Thank God. But you know what? If if you don't want people to comment on your shit, you don't want people to be able to download it to offer commentary. Fuck it. You know what? You'll just be irrelevant that much faster. 
Is peer-to-peer -peer file sharing risky? Yes, it can be. Aside from the legal liability for unlawful infringement described above, the use of P2P software can expose your computer and other devices to harmful viruses, spyware, and other malware that can compromise your privacy. You know, when it comes to spyware and malware and shit that I get on, on computers when I'm installing software, I have to always be careful when you're installing this toolbar or that plugin or that add-on or this piece of software. It's the corporate bullshit where they, they, they use... The idea that you, you know, like even if you're installing like VLC or a vast antivirus, you have to uncheck the box that says, please don't infect my browser with all this crap that's going to put all sorts of ads up in my in my internet experience. That's more harmful than P2P, although what you have in peer-to-peer -peer file sharing where there are copyright violations going on is that you've created a black market, basically. And so you do have increased risks. It's like, you know, is the dr are, are drugs violent? Well, you don't see, uh, you know, people brewing beer, getting into gunfights. Oh, but you did during Prohibition. Maybe that would explain the violence around drugs that we see today. And maybe that would explain why you see viruses and people taking advantage of each other who are stupid when, when it comes to peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. But by and large, that's that's insignificant. The, far, the vast majority of peer-to-peer -peer, peer file sharing is people who want to help each other out and provide content to each other. We're just creating this, you know, I, there's a, well, I, I shared the the video that i had to watch <laughs> yeah um and and got some interesting comments so there's there's uh, a lot of people who are eagerly anticipating the development of the mesh net or you know a decentralized internet and it's coming people it's coming like really all of this stuff the, the, the technology developing now and the way that the internet is going to be uh, just working between individuals not having to go through a centralized provider at all it's going to render all of this irrelevant eventually but we we as consumers, being more intelligent, being more conscientious, can hasten this process. So what did I have to do when they when they pinged me for the third time? It was like, Adam, we're going to sit you down. You're going to have to watch this video before we turn your internet back on. I didn't watch it, by the way, until like far until after I got my internet turned back on. I mean, this is this is an internet based business I'm running here. You know, I can't just have my internet down and take five minutes to go watch a video when I've got videos to upload and I've got business to conduct. So. When I was only able to go to the Verizon website, yeah, click through, click through, there's the video. I watched it later, and I actually posted it on YouTube, and I hope they fucking come after me. Yeah, Verizon, fuck you. I dare you. I ripped your video. I put it on YouTube. I'm making money from it right now because it's playing ads on my YouTube channel. Bring it. So they uh, made me watch this video, and it says, first, you should stop downloading copyrighted material. First of all, Fuck you, I wasn't. Second of all, your entire concept of this is invalid. I'm exercising my property rights and purchasing a service from you. Now, yeah, you're you're sure you're private property. You're you're welcome to impose whatever standards you want on it. But Verizon, you're fucking pathetic, really. This is this is really disgusting. And you're responding to the market, I understand. And I'm changing the market right here with what I'm saying because people are gonna get this and they're gonna understand that supporting you doing this is not in their best interest. So this is, this is great. They also have this line in the video. Assume if it's too good to be legal, it's too good to be legal. And there's like no irony in this. Too good. What's too good to be legal? Yeah, because if it was legal, if the government allowed you to have it, like if, if, if you were able to get this without the government pointing guns at people, they would, be, it would just be too good. If it's too good to be legal, it must be illegal because the government doesn't want you to have nice things. I mean, the, 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 just the language here is so... Uh, I, I don't know if it's Orwellian coming from a private corporation, but well, it's a public corporation, but it's uh, certainly a government authorized corporate entity. So yeah, I guess Orwellian is appropriate. Remove all P2P software. Verizon is specifically telling you don't use peer-to-peer -peer software to share whatever it is that's legitimate things to be shared. Don't use it. Holy shit, really? Now, one of the comments I got when I posted this video came from uh, Moon Biot. If it makes you feel any better, I got to tell the people who created the copyright alert system to their faces that they were utter morons and failures. No, seriously. I went to their public forum at New York Law School a few months ago. It was live stream and also archived on archive.org. Basically, everyone there told them that they were assholes. It was so satisfying. Well, you know what? Moon Biot, thank you for sharing that, and I really appreciate it. It's good to see that the vast majority of people get this. 
at least who are paying attention. The problem is that there's a lot of people who have no idea about these issues and are just going, oh, I'm just gonna, oh, I'm just gonna walk out of my house and I'm gonna go to the movie theaters. I'm gonna give more money to the MPAA and I'm gonna go to the record store and I'm gonna buy the CD or I'm gonna go to the iTunes, whatever the fuck, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna give money to the RIAA so they can use it to fuck me over and violate my rights and point guns at me in case there's an accidental copyright alert system. I'm just gonna bow down and bend over and take it. So we have to reach these people. We have to convince them that there is a better world possible by standing up and being a conscientious consumer in a way that fights this intellectual property racket. Dear valued Verizon customer, we are sending you this email notice because you or someone using your Verizon internet service recently provided an online acknowledgement of your third copyright alert. What does this mean to me? With your online acknowledgement, you have agreed to stop and ask anyone who may have access to your Verizon internet account to stop any infringing activity that may be associated with your account. Will you share my information with anyone? No, 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 no. Only if the government asks. Now, there's another comment on the video I posted, and, and if you want, you can check it. We'll, we'll include the link to this video from uh, from Verizon. I mean, it's, it's so insulting. They talk to you like a fucking child. Dac is back, wrote, Fuck Verizon. Someone needs to start up a pirate-friendly ISP. I nominate Kim.com. He has the funds and the technical know-how. And you know, it's great. Thing is, I don't have a choice. And this is a real problem because I run an internet-based business. I'm I'm more or less by the nature of that business, forced, I should say, I, you know, choose in order to, to, to conduct the business the way that I have to here in Herndon, Virginia. I don't have an option. I don't have a better choice. Although, here's the thing, Verizon. Here's the real fuck you. Sooner or later, even though you enjoy a corporate monopoly in certain ways, yeah, I should say it's it's a it's sort of corporatist oligopoly that you've got going on with your five major ISP providers because it's there are too many barriers put up by government to uh, to overcome the regulations to compete with you. If if I could start my own company that would do this, they would say, yeah, we're going to be an internet for a, or we're going to be a government free ISP. I could get tons of business. People would love it. Everybody loves to be able to communicate without having guns pointed at them. Imagine that. It was one of the things we're seeing flourishing in the age of the internet. It's really beautiful. And I actually said that if Kim.com started an ISP, I would pay double what I'm paying for Verizon right now. This is how we change the market. This is how we change the incentives. Now, are we going to get Verizon to be uh, rendered obsolete? Maybe not by this, but if, if as conscientious consumers, we can change the terrain by changing the market for information, we can make it that much harder. And you know what, in a way, like I said, the internet is killing the uh, concept of intellectual property anyways. The racket is going away. It is being rendered obsolete because with the distribution that is capable through the internet, these centralized mechanisms of distribution are no longer relevant. The things are it's going away, people. Like we can all we can, we just put another nail in the coffin. And I have a feeling the technology is actually going to really going to have a leapfrog and render this obsolete. Like we're going to have either the mesh net or we're going to have just some portable box. You're not going to have to have this silly thing hooked up to a wire that goes into a box in the wall that goes into some centralized network. All that's going to be rendered irrelevant. But the faster that we can disempower companies by like Verizon by not promoting their sponsors, and by this I mean the copyright holders. Stop paying for content. And I don't mean don't donate to Adam versus the man or stop buying our shirts. No, no, no. I really appreciate the support. But support those who don't point guns at you to get money from you. How about that as a conscientious consumer? So it doesn't matter if they suggest that I that I do this or that because I didn't do it. And lots of people are, in, in terms of downloading Sons of Anarchy, I probably downloaded tons of copyright data, though. Um, you know, I legally, illegally, I, I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's data. It's information. It's something that I can access. It's coming to me. It's something that I'm doing through peaceful use of my property. Now, if you don't fully reject intellectual property, then you're never going to understand this. And this is really key. Because you can only believe in one of two things and be intellectually consistent, either real property or intellectual property. Either you own yourself and real physical property trumps the imaginary intellectual property, or you don't own yourself. And if you have an idea in your brain that someone else came up with first, they can point guns at you to stop you from using that. The world becomes much simpler when you have the intellectual integrity and the courage to look at this thing honestly. And you know what? It wasn't an easy issue for me to understand. You have to really wrap your brain around this and get past this ingrained propaganda. And you know what? Younger people get this easier than older people because they haven't been subjected to the propaganda their whole lives, that intellectual property is some kind of real property that's been so ingrained, especially in Americans' minds. 
Not so much in other countries that, that, that don't have this racket as ingrained, but generally in most uh, industrialized or developed countries, we have this racket. We have this ingrained bullshit that we have to rid ourselves of. And as content producers like myself, we have to stand up and say, we are going to outcompete these assholes. We are going to provide our content for free. We are going to survive on the donations and the goodwill of people that want to see us continue to produce what we produce. And just look at, look at crowdfunding. You see the way that you, you you don't have to go to you know market studio heads anymore. And by the way, uh, I was listening to the uh, the Adam Carolla podcast, doing research the other day, and he was talking about movies that he's done and how much it was terrible for him to have to go and suck the dicks of so. Okay, he didn't say it that way, but to go kiss ass of all these movie uh, company executives, they don't want to make his movie. When all he has to do now is turn to the internet and say, look, do you want to see this movie being made? Chip in and we'll actually send you some goodies. We'll make it worth your while and we'll produce content that the market demands. Not that these centralized assholes are, are, are thinking is the best to ram down your throat. This is why what we see out of Hollywood is so much bullshit propaganda reinforcing the government narrative and the, and the existing social paradigm. There's no change. There's no challenge. There's no evolution out of the movie industry. It's just the repetition. It's just the ingraining of the current paradigm and the greater dependence dependence on government that they want to, Im to imbue in you because that's how they make their money. If it wasn't for government, Hollywood wouldn't exist, but it needs you, the consumer also. And so we need you to make this happen faster, to be a smarter consumer. So what's the answer? Aside from being able to look at it this, this way and see past the, the, the propaganda and, and it, you know what? Little, 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 itty bitty caveat on this. It's true that you can have voluntary restrictions on the use of data, and you can have contractual agreements, and you can have trade secrets, but you cannot use the force of government to restrict the free flow of ideas and call yourself a moral person now, having heard what I just said. Boycott Hollywood all claimers of intellectual property, be a conscientious consumer, support content creators who live up to the promise of the internet, and we will drag the corporations that for the time being may be necessary along with the development and evolution of humanity and the market kicking and screaming if we have to. So what would the media landscape look like without shitty pop music and Hollywood movies that insult your intelligence? Well, <laughs> it would look a lot like what we see on the internet when you are a properly informed consumer of uh, content. But if you don't want your intelligence insulted, start being a smarter consumer and stop being a sucker. And if you're going to share movies, if you're going to share TV shows, you know, hey, maybe maybe you can beat the copyright system by putting the Adam versus the man logo, you know, somewhere on the screen. Maybe it won't be recognized by their little copyright alert system. Who knows? But... At Adam versus the man, we will never, no matter what you do with our content, never, ever threaten your rights or send the government after you. Non-interventionism is the opposite of isolationism. How so? So does every other person. No. Do you not support our military? Do you want to get nuked? You think the active duty troops supporting Ron Paul are, are nuts? Evidently.